Hey, what's up, y'all? Today I'm gonna show you how I tune my snare. Uh, I've had a bunch of you guys ask me um, if I could just go a little more in depth into what I do and some of the variables that are at play with how I get my snare sound. So it starts with the Genera Dry Evans snare head. Uh, I've used it on a bunch of different snares. I'm currently using my signature SJC snare, and it's a copper snare, and it's pretty awesome, honestly, if I can say so uh, myself. It's great. It's really versatile and I can do a bunch of different tunings, a bunch of different genres, um, low dynamic, high dynamic, I'll stop plugging it, but it's, it's great and it's a perfect example uh, for today of how I'm gonna tune and what I would normally do on any snare really. So, I have a fresh head that I just put on and it's uh, finger tight, so all of the lugs are basically around the same tension. So a big variable to the consistency I get with tuning, uh, with you know, touring and being in a different room every night and all that uh, is the Evans Torque Key. I think it's pretty awesome. It's a lifesaver really, because it's a, it has a little dial right there and there's three different notches. I wouldn't say that it's the end all be all to like you get this key and then your snare sounds perfect every day. That's not really how it works. Uh, at least that's not how I use it. What I use it for is consistency. So if I know I want the snare around the same pitch and around the same tuning every day, this is perfect. But the key is from there, and eh, the key. <laughs> from there, what we do is tap tune after we get a like ballpark of where we want our snare to sit. So you, you still have to fine tune it, um, and I'll go through that a little bit later. Everything you hear today, all the drum sounds you hear today are gonna be just two overheads, right and left, no effects, no nothing. Um, so what you hear is really what you get with this. All right, so I have the torque key set at six, and that's one notch and then six. Every torque key is a little bit different though, so I wouldn't rely on that. You know, you kind of have to find your balance between the, the head you're using, the snare you're using, and the torque key. So a little bit of trial and error is involved. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and tune up the snare, and I will show you how it sounds after. All right, so we got it tuned up. Another element I use that's really important and it's pretty minor, but uh, this is called a snare weight. It's a little different than a moon gel, but it works the same basically. Like a moon gel to me kind of sucks the life out of the head too much. Um, and this is just a snare weight and it just kind of lays on top. So it does get rid of some of the like nasty ring that I don't really want, but it doesn't suffocate the drum either, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. So I'm about to head out on a little pop and R&B run. So the snare is tuned a little bit higher than I would normally. Um, but most of the time that's kind of where I like it to sit. I do like snares with a lot more crack, but what I don't want to ever sacrifice is the body. And so that's why I think this head is great. And it, again, it's the Evans Genera Dry. But that's basically what I look for most of the time when I'm tuning a snare. You know, keeping the body, keeping the crack. I want a lot of definition and then ghost notes. And that also has to do with how loose or tight you keep the snare strands at the bottom. And I keep mine, I keep them pretty loose. Lately, I've been tuning the resonant head a little bit higher than the batter head. Um, I've noticed that, oddly, it gives it more body while also giving it more pop, which is clearly what I'm looking for. But in the past, I've tuned it a few notches below, and it's been great, too. Again, there's a lot of trial and error involved. Like, whatever you're looking for in your snare sound, um, I suggest you really try to dive in and figure that out. Because every snare is different, every snare head is different, every key is different, so. You know, there's some work involved, but then again, that's you know, that's the that's the whole thing. Like, you want to have a snare sound that sounds like you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and see where this snare sounds. I haven't fine-tuned anything. Again, I just used the torque key, put it on six, and got all the lugs to the same tensions. So all we're using is overheads. Nothing crazy. No studio magic. Uh, let's see how it sounds. All right, so for me right now, there's a little bit too much overtone. Um, also, I don't think there's enough body. The room helps out a lot too, so every room is gonna drastically change how your drums sound, which is annoying, but that, again, is why this key is awesome, because at least you get it to a consistent point where you know, like, okay, this is the ballpark of where my snare sounded great before. So then I kind of trust myself to hopefully get it to where it was before. So with tap tuning, what you're really listening for is the overtone of each lug. And admittedly, I'm not the best at this. It's something I'm still trying to get better at. Basically, every lug gives off its own slight little overtone. And the goal is to make them match up as best as possible. If you can get all the overtones of each lug pretty close, then they're all gonna be consistent and sound even and give you that really nice, consistent 
huge snare sound that most people are looking for. All right, cool. Should be at a good place now. So let's go ahead and play some kick snare hat just to see how it feels, make sure everything feels right, sits well. All right, cool, so that's my general approach to tuning a snare drum. Uh, again, not just this snare or this head, but most snares all the time, that's kind of how I'd go about it. Get in the ballpark with the key, and then tap tune your way to hopefully a consistent tone. And in most of the videos you've seen over the years, this is my snare sound and how I get it. There's not much that I do in Logic. The most important thing to me is having a pure source. And so if you make your snare sound good before you record it, then it's gonna sound good after. I'll do another video also showing you, you know, what I do EQ wise and compression wise to the kit. It definitely helps get that crack and that pop. But again, it's all about the source. So as long as you have a great sounding snare, it's gonna be really easy in the post. All right, well, if you guys have any questions or anything, just throw them in the comments below. I got you, I'll try to answer them. Every snare is a little bit different. Every head's a little bit different. And also, depending on what kind of music you're playing, what session you may be in, what artist you're playing for, you know, there's a wide variety of different snare tunings and different methods to get certain snare sounds. So this is just my usual method. Um, depending on what project I may be playing on, I would go a completely different route. Maybe in the future we can do some lower tunings, medium tunings, you know, the big fat snare kind of thing. But for now, this is it, and I uh, appreciate you guys watching.